Hello again. As I have already explained how to analyze an epicyclic gear train using tabular method, in this video we will discuss an example of epicyclic gear train and we will solve this problem using tabular method. Apart from that, we will take one interview problem, common interview problem and as well we will take one problem which is asked in SAT examination in 1982 and in that examination no correct answer was given in options. So let's start with an example. This example is an epicyclic gear train as shown in the figure is composed of a fixed annular wheel. Now this wheel, annular wheel A is fixed. It is having 150 teeth. So this A is having 150 internal teeth. The wheel A is meshing with wheel B which drives wheel D through an idle wheel C. So A is in mesh with B and B is driving D through C. The wheels B and C are carried on an arm which revolves clockwise at 100 rpm about the axis A and D. So this arm is revolving around this center around around this center in clockwise direction and its speed is 100 rpm if the wheel b and d have 25 and 40 teeth respectively so number of teeth on b and d are given 25 and 40 we have to find the number of teeth on c and the speed and sense of rotation of c so we have to determine speed of c and number of teeth on C. These two things we have to calculate. For that we have to prepare a table. Now this table is like this. I have already explained this table. There are three steps, common steps, one, two, three. Now condition of motion, second column. Now revolutions of the elements in that first column will always be column of arm. So here first we will write arm. After that we will start from one side. Either we will start from D then C, then B and then A or you can start from A, then B, then C and then D. This particular problem I have started from gear D. So first is arm, second column is gear D, then D is in co contact with C, so third column is C, C is in contact with B, so fourth column is B and B is in contact with A, so fifth column is gear A. Now first step is we have to keep arm fixed and we will give one rotation, one clockwise rotation to gear D. So we are giving one clockwise rotation to gear D while, while keeping this arm as fixed. So if you give one rotation to D, what will be the rotation of C? This C will be number of teeth on D divided by number of teeth on C multiplied by speed of gear D. So this is plus one, so multiplied by plus one. Now here these two are in external teeth are in mesh so c and d both external teeth are in mesh so direction of rotation will be opposite to each other that means gear d is clockwise so gear c will be anti-clockwise that's why i have written here minus to represent anti-clockwise now this td and tc this ratio is same as radius of rd by rc or diameter of d or c so in place of td by tc you can write rd by rc also or diameter of D divided by diameter of C. Now speed of gear B, what again what you have to do, ratio of gear C, ratio of number of teeth on gear C divided by num ratio, number, of number of teeth on gear B, that is TC by TB multiplied by speed of gear C. So this is speed of gear C, TD by TC. So multiply this with TC by TB, TC divided by TB. Now again direction of rotation changes from minus to plus. Now simplify this, this two you can cancel out so you will get TD by TB. Now similarly speed of gear A, what you will get? Number of teeth on B divided by number of teeth on A, TB by TA multiplied by speed of gear B. So this is speed of gear B. Now in this case direction of rotation of B and A both are same, both are clockwise because one is uh, external teeth of B is in mesh with internal teeth of A. So in that case direction of rotation will be same. That's why here it is plus. So only difficulty will be in this first row only. Once you have completed this first row, second and third row are very simple. What you have to do, we have to give gear D plus X rotation. That means you have to multiply each element of this row by 
plus x so multi 0 multiplied by x is 0 and multiplied by x here so plus x here multiply x multiply x multiply x so this so you will get this row and third row is again very simple you have to add y, y revolution to all so when you add 0 plus y so this is y plus y so this is x plus y this term plus y this term plus y this term plus y once you get this so this last row represents speed of each of these gears i have i have kept only last row now in this you can see that number of teeth on c is not given number of teeth on d b and a are given so there is some relation between radius of this b c d with a so you can see that radius of a radius of a this radius of a if you see this radius of a is equal to radius of d from here to here plus 2 times radius of c so diameter of c plus 2 times radius of b so that's what i have written here rd plus 2 rc plus 2 rb is equal to ra so once you get this relation same relation you will get for number of teeth so you just replace r with t so td plus 2 tc plus 2 tb is equal to ta now these values are given td tb and ta are given put these values here so you will get number of teeth on c so number of teeth on c you are getting as 30 so first you have determined find the number of teeth on c which is equal to 30 second we have given speed of arm is given so speed of arm is clockwise 100 rpm so this is speed of arm plus y this value is given this value is given plus y is equal to 100 rpm so y is equal to 100 apart from that speed of gear a is also given fixed annular wheel so it is written fixed annular wheel means its speed is zero so speed of gear a is also given so this is equal to zero so put this value x td by ta plus y is equal to zero now value of y is known number of teeth on d number of teeth on a these are known so you can calculate value of x and you are getting value of x is equal to minus 375 so once you get minus 375 value of x you can now calculate speed of c which is this term this is the speed of c so this is what speed of c so put this value minus x td by tc plus y now all these values are known you can put all these values 375 so this is minus x already this is minus 375 so it will become plus 375 number of teeth on d is 40 number of teeth on c is 30 plus 100 value of y when you calculate this you will get speed of c as 600 rpm now you are getting positive value and we have taken positive as clockwise so speed of c or speed or c is rotating in clockwise direction with 600 rpm now another problem in times it is asked in interviews consider a coin a rolls around another same size coin, coin b at the end of how many revolutions of coin a will the center of coin a first reach its starting point what we have to do we have to roll this second one this a this we have to roll around b and it is reaching in its original position so how many times it it, it is rotated about its own axis so you can see it is rotated about its own axis multiple times so how many times it is rotated that's what we have to calculate now the same way we can analyze this as we analyze gear using tabular method now you can assume one arm here so this arm is rotating actually in clockwise so you are giving this arm one full rotation so the center will move from this position to around this to reach here so we are giving one full revolution to this arm a uh, this arm small a so arm is fixed and gear b plus one revolution so we have given this gear b as plus one revolution so arm is fixed so arms rotation is zero gear b plus one so what will be the speed of gear a now these two are of same size so minus tb by ta now there are no teeth on this b and a but their speed of rotation the same ratio you will get so rb by ra now rb and ra both are same 
both are of same size therefore it is equal to minus 1 so if you wrote revolve if you rotate b once a will also rotate once if you fix this arm now what you have to do you have to multiply throughout x so we have multiplied throughout x here now add y so you will get x plus y this relation you will get so this is the speed of arm this is speed of gear b this is speed of gear a now we know that arm is given one full rotation so y is equal to one so once you give y is equal to one now gear b is fixed gear b is not rotating so x plus y is equal to zero so put this value of y here so you will get x is equal to minus one so you get x is equal to minus one now you can calculate speed of gear a so this is equal to minus x plus y here x is equal to minus one put x is equal to minus one and y is equal to one once you calculate then you will get na is equal to 2 that means if you revolve this a around b for one complete revolution a will rotate about its own axis twice the similar problem is asked in this 1982 sad question in the figure above the radius of circle a is one third the radius of circle b starting from position shown in figure circle a rolls around circle b at the end of how many revolutions of circle a will the center of circle a first reach its starting point so you are revolving this a around this b and it reaches back to its own original position so what will be the number of rotations uh, a about its own axis will take place so these are the answers given but none of these answers are correct you can analyze this using this tabular method so assume one arm here so you are giving this arm one rotation so in our tabular method same way first you have to fix arm give one rotation to this wheel b then you will get this rotation of a in along in that way what you are getting so arm zero speed of gear b plus one gear a is equal to tb divided by ta or which is proportional to rb divided by ra now rb divided by ra so radius of rb is three times radius of ra so therefore this is equal to minus three minus because direction of rotation is opposite now second case multiply throughout with x so zero plus x minus three x now add y plus y x plus y minus three x plus y we have given one rotation to arm that means y is equal to one and gear b is fixed so x plus y is equal to zero so x is equal to minus one now this is the speed of gear a or number of rotation of gear a so put this value of x and y and you will get number of rotation of a is equal to four so actually this a when you once you revolve this a around along this b this entire rotation after when it reaches back to its own position by that time this a will revolve four times about this own axis but here you can see no answer is given as four so actual answer is four so this mistake they have made in 1982 thank you for watching this video